Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're still discussing Cauchy's functional equations. So in the previous two videos, we have introduced Cauchy's functional equations and we said that we're going to be solving some functional equations that are, uh, that involved using Cauchy's functional equations in order to solve them. So in this video, we'll take a look at one nice functional equation, but as you can spot already here, we have this Cauchy functional equation. But if you think that the problem is solved immediately, then you are wrong. And to see why, let's get started. So let's take a look at our functional equation. So here we're asked to find all functions f from r to r, such that we have the following three conditions. The first one is that f of 1 is equal to 1. So f of 1 is equal to 1. The second one is f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y, which is the additive uh, equation of Cauchy's functional equations, which we have already discussed in previous videos. And we also have the following nice functional equation, f of x times f of 1 over x is equal to 1. Okay, so now we have these three, uh, these three conditions. So let's take a look here. Of course, we know that this is a Cauchy's functional equation, right? And which uh, has a solution of the following form. So we know already that f of x is equal to some constant c times x, right? Uh, this is the solution for Cauchy's functional equation, the additive version. Okay, and of course to see what is c, so we need to determine what is c. We know that f of 1 is equal to 1. By substituting x with 1, we see that f of 1 is equal to c, which is 1. So that means that c is 1. So f of 1 is equal to 1 means that c is equal to 1, which means that this is our function f is just x. So we just know that f of x is equal to x. And does that mean we are done? Because we have found that f of x is equal to x? Well, no. Because we mentioned earlier that when we are solving Cauchy's functional equations, we're just solving them on Q, so on the set of rational numbers. But here we're asked to find from R to R. So, so what we do know is that f of x is equal to x for rational numbers over Q. So for any rational number x, f of x is equal to x. But what about irrational numbers? Well, that's what we need to do right now, what we need to find. And we said that we can actually generalize this solution from Q to R by uh, proving some stuff like f is continuous or f is monotonic. And we said that uh, we discussed how to prove that f is monotonic or f is increasing in this case. To show that f is increasing, we said in the previous video that we just need to show that f of the positive numbers is equal uh, or actually is positive. So we just need to show that uh, f of uh, any positive number, real number x, is positive uh, for all positive numbers. So we need to show that. So that, that means that all what we need to do right now is prove this. So if we can show that f of positive numbers is positive, then we are done. We can say that f is increasing, which means that we can generalize from q to r, which means that f of x is equal to x. So let's actually do this. And unfortunately, this is not easy. So first of all, let's erase everything here. OK, let's actually write our first result, which is f of x is equal to x for, uh, for rational numbers. So let's say over q. So for example, f of 1 is equal to 1, f of 2 is equal to 2, and so on. OK. So now, how can we show that f of positive is positive? OK. So actually, if you have some experience with inequalities, and when you see something like this, f of x, x here, and 1 over x here, and you need to find something positive, then you should immediately think of a very famous inequality, which involves both x and 1 over x. And this inequality is the following. So 1 over x plus x 
the absolute value of this thing is in fact greater than or equal to 2. This is a really famous inequality. Uh, I'll leave it to you as a homework. Uh, try to prove it and write your proof in the comments below. Okay, so this is a very famous thing. So of course, if x is positive, then that means that simply x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 2, which means that this is positive. So this is really nice in equality because it mixed uh, x with 1 over x. Okay, but how can we use this to our advantage? Okay, so before just uh, mentioning how to do this, uh, I, I want to just say what happens when x is negative. So when x is negative, this actually becomes uh, negative, this, the, the inside. So that means that simply the same quantity here, x plus 1 over x minus 2, is in fact less than or equal to negative 4. So this is for positive numbers, and this is for negative numbers. OK? So just keep this in mind. OK, so how can we use this to our advantage? We need to show that f of positive numbers is actually positive. So how can we use this? Well, because we want to use this nice things, because we know some information about f of 1 over x, so we can actually, instead of representing uh, x or a positive number, let's say it's y, instead of presenting y, uh, f of y, as, as this form, we can write y in the following form. So for each y, there exists some x such that y is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 2. And also you can show this as well by simply solving this quadratic equation for a positive number y and finding a positive number x that satisfies this uh, equation. Okay, so instead of writing f of y and trying to show that f of y is positive, let's write y as this form. So we need to show that f of this thing is actually uh, positive. Okay, so let's now try to write f of this thing and try to evaluate it and simplify it. Okay. So this problem inequalities matter. So let's actually try to eval evaluate f of y, which uh, in case y is just a positive number, which is, so we said that f of y is equal to f of x plus 1 over x minus 2. And because we have this Cauchy functional equation, we can separate this as following form. And of course, f is odd, so you can write this as this form, f of x plus f of 1 over x minus f of 2. And we know that f of 2 is 2, right? So this is minus 2. And furthermore, we already know this because f of 1 over x is just 1 over f of x. So that means that this is simply f of x plus 1 over f of x minus 2. OK, so now we know that this f of this thing is this thing. So f of any positive, uh, any positive number y, we can represent it in the following form. But now I want you to take a look at this form. Something plus 1 over something minus 2. Well, actually, this is the same thing as this, right? Just here we have x, here we have f of, f of x. So this should be positive already, right? So uh, you should uh, wait, um, uh, wait a second and think about it. Because this is, in fact, positive if f of x is positive. But if f of x is negative, we said that this will become less than uh, negative 4. So in fact, what we have shown here is the following result. So now what we have shown is that f of y belongs to one of these intervals, negative infinity to negative 4, OK? And the next interval is actually uh, from 0 to infinity, yes, so it is, okay, so something like this. We have shown this, this result. So when y is a positive number, f of y is in this form. Actually, we can represent this in a nice way using the following line. So let's write here. Here we have 0. Here we have negative 4. 
here we have infinity and here we have negative infinity. So what we have shown is that actually uh, f of the positive numbers is either here, here, or here. But it cannot be here. So it's either here or here. But it cannot be here. Okay. Now, if, if f of the positive number y is here, then we are done because we need to show that f of the positive is positive. But what happens if it's here? Here we're going to have a problem, right? So what, what we sh should prove here is that there exists no such a number, a positive number f of y such that uh, f of y is negative, which means that it's here. So the easiest way to show this is simply by contradiction. So let's assume to the contradiction that we do have some positive alpha such that f of alpha is negative, and we can easily conclude that f of alpha is less than negative 4, and now we can reach some contradiction. Okay, so let's actually erase this here and try just to show this result. Okay, so what we're going to assume is the following. Let's assume that we have some alpha such that uh, f of alpha is negative and alpha is positive. So alpha is positive and f of alpha is negative. And we said earlier that f of the positive is either here or here because f of alpha is negative, that means it's less than negative 4. So we can immediately conclude that f of alpha is less than or equal to negative 4. Okay, but how can we reach a contradiction from here? Well, take a look at your functional equations. What relations can you use? Well, the, actually, you can use this one right here. So we know f of alpha is less than negative 4. So let's plug alpha here. So we're, what we're going to get is f of alpha times f of 1 over alpha is 1. Okay, so now you should think about this and pause the video and try to think about it because now things are really simple. So, okay. So let's actually show this now. So we do know that f of alpha times f of 1 over alpha is equal to 1. And we know that 1 over alpha is positive because alpha is positive. So by taking the absolute value of these two, we're going to get the absolute value of f of alpha times the absolute value of f of 1 over alpha is equal to 1. But this is the absolute value of f of alpha is greater than 4. So that means that actually this absolute value of this thing is less than 1 over 4. And at the, at the same time, this is positive. Or, uh, sorry, it's negative. So let's simplify actually this uh, by taking a look here at this line. So we know that f of alpha is something right here, right? So let's actually draw it again. Here we have 0, and here we have negative 4. Okay. So alpha is something right here. Okay. And 1 over alpha, it is negative. F of 1, uh, yes, uh, f of 1 over alpha, of course it's negative, because the multiplication of f of alpha times f of 1 over alpha is 1. So it should be from, uh, of the same sign. So that means that f, one, uh, f of 1 over alpha, sorry, this is, uh, this is f not alpha. So f of alpha is something right here. So we know that f of alpha is here. And f of 1 over alpha, where should it be? Because f of 1 over alpha times f of alpha is 1, that means that it's something right here. So let's say that this is one, negative 1 over 4. So actually, it should be something right here. If you think about it for, for a second, it makes sense. Because f of 1 over alpha times f of alpha is 1. So 1 should be here, and the other should be here. OK, so what does that mean is that f of 1 over alpha is negative, and it's greater than uh, negative 1 over 4. But this is already a contradiction because we have shown that f of the positive numbers is either here or here. 
But f of 1 over alpha, f of the positive number, is actually here, which is a contradiction. So this is basically the contradiction that we have, we have uh, been searching of, and we are basically done. So I hope this makes sense. Let's now erase everything and write. So what we actually have concluded is that there exists no such alpha, which means that f of alpha is positive. So what we have shown now is that simply uh, f of y is greater than or equal to 0 uh, for any positive y. So we have shown this result. And if you remember, this uh, condition or this result f of y, f of the positive is positive, mixed with Cauchy's functional equation, the additive version of it, that's, that means that f of x is equal to cx for all real numbers, not just q. So here we have shown this for q, but now we can safely say that f of x is equal to x over r. So now this means that f is increasing, which means that we can safely say that f of x is equal to x uh, for any real number. And now we are done. Well, let's take a look at our uh, functional equations to say that this function satisfies them. Of course, f of 1 is equal to 1. x plus y is equal to x plus y. And x times 1 over x is 1. And basically, we are done. So let's summarize what we have done here. So we started with the functional equation. And we knew that this is Cauchy's functional equation. So it, it should have the solution f of x equals cx. And c is 1 because f of 1 is equal to 1. But f of x is equal to x or over just rational numbers. So we need to generalize to real numbers. Of course, that's why we have the following equation, functional equation. And to do this, we need to show that f is monotonic. In this case, we show that f is increasing. To show that f is increasing, you just need to show that f of positive numbers is positive. And to show this, because we have x and 1 over x, we use the famous inequality x plus 1 over x minus 2, the absolute value of this thing, uh, or actually uh, this thing is positive for positive x, and this thing is less than negative 4 for negative x. And we showed, uh, we used this to express the, any positive number y as, uh, or in the form of x uh, plus 1 over x minus 2 for some uh, positive value of x. And we simply show that f of x is positive when x is positive, which means that f is increasing, which means that indeed we can generalize uh, this solution to real numbers as well. So the moral of the story here is that when you see fun uh, Cauchy functional equation, don't immediately think that you have solved the problem. Sometimes contestants tend to forget to show that f is increasing. And sometimes, in fact, this is more difficult uh, than to reach the real functional equation or the real Cauchy functional equation. <laughs> and of course, in this example, we, ha we have already uh, been given the Cauchy functional equation. So of course, we shouldn't just say that uh, this is Cauchy functional equation and so f of x is equal to x. So you should really pay attention to this. And in the next video, we will take a look at an exercise in which we, we are going to use everything we've learned so far. So if you like the video, like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and see you guys in the next video.